Hey everybody, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64Elite.com. And today I'm gonna show you how you can transform any photograph with one layer, one measly little gradient adjustment layer that can take your landscape photography, any of your photography actually, to the next level while adding color and mood to your images so that the viewer is transformed by color theory and they don't even know it's happening. Here's a little quick example. I've got a lot to go over. Here's the before, here's the after. Oh man, every time I see this, I just I just wanna jump into it. All right, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial because I got a lot to share with you and I'm already really excited. So today I'm gonna teach you something really cool with something called the diamond gradient. And of all things, you know, you typically think that the diamond gradient is trash, but it's absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it's probably become one of my favorite gradients when I'm doing sunset and landscape photography. Now this can be used for any type of photography of any genre of photography. Typically how you use this is anytime you wanna take the viewer and direct them somewhere. Like your traffic director saying, hey, you need to come here. That's what this is for, okay? You can suck the viewer right in. It's like a ghost trap. It's like you're a ghost buster. You throw that thing down, <laughs> this thing's coming in. That's where the viewer goes when you put this gradient down. Now, if you're not familiar with gradients or why you'd wanna use them, this has something to do with color theory, color grading. Color theory is basically using color to change the mood and feeling of whatever piece of art you're working on. And color grading is actually the act of doing it. It's grading the photo so that it gets the, the viewer into it. I do color grading all the time with my own images. So what I decided to do today was take all Adobe stock images to prove that this can work on anything, 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 anything. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna show you what the diamond gradient is, and then I'm gonna show you the cheater method. Now I even built a cheater method for you so you can download some actions and you can download 16 gradients that are gonna work right outside the box. All you gotta do is follow my little directions that are gonna be given to you through the action. But I don't want you to download that yet. It'll be in the card above, but don't do it. And it'll be in the description below, but don't do it, okay? Let's let's work on this first. Now I do have to give you a little disclaimer. I'm gonna get excited. I always get excited when I'm working with gradients. It's just the, the way it is. So if I get a little overexcited, don't say, Blake, you drink too much coffee. It's not coffee, it's passion, okay? So check this out. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the, the gradient that I'm working with. If you go to your adjustment layers below and you click on the gradient. Now the gradient, this is the gradient fill dialog. This is where you, this is the command center for all things gradients, okay? So this is telling me that the gradient is a magenta gradient that goes into transparency. Now this is based off of whatever you might've used in the past, whatever gradient you might've used in the past and whatever colors are in your palette over here. The style of the gradient, this is where things are important. We have a radial gradient, which makes it a little ball. We have a angled gradient, which this is more pointless than anything else, unless you're doing stuff with text. This can be great for graphic design and text work, but I haven't really seen too much of a place for it in my uh, landscape photography. Um, when it comes to the Reflected gradient, that's great because it gives you a reflection from you know, your magenta going from the, the top to the bottom. Uh, so it fans out in both directions. It's a linear gradient that goes in both directions from wherever you tell it to go. And then there's a diamond gradient. Now the diamond gradient, I'm just gonna pick a random color gradient here. I'm just gonna click on my gradients and I'm just gonna pick this one, okay? Just to show you what the diamond gradient is and then we'll get into the rest of this. The diamond gradient, is really just a diamond. Look at it, the shape of it, it looks or appears to be a diamond. It, it, it goes down in a vertical and horizontal position and it fills in right here and just goes out to the outsides. This creates a nice radiating glow when used correctly. But if you were to just have your color palette set to this blue and orange and then pick a diamond gradient and you're working on a landscape photo and you see this, you're gonna say delete because it looks like trash, right? but let's use the soft light blend mode for this. There's many blend modes that you can use, but the best one for this right off the bat and really easy to tell is the soft light blend mode. Why? Because what the soft light blend mode does is if this layer was black and white gradient, it would make our, our image darker where it's black and lighter where it's white, but never pure black and never pure white. So what's happening here is it's giving our image a slight orange where things are orange, but never pure orange and a slight blue where things are blue, but never a pure blue. So it's a great gradient to use for color grading. Very quick, very easy, very responsive. Real quick, before we continue, this is kind of like the commercial break. If you like this, please press the subscribe button below and hit the little bell to get notified. I do video tutorials like this all the time where I take Photoshop, something very convoluted and very difficult and make it very easy to learn and give you an actionable workflow that you can use right now today. So if you're the type of person that likes that kind of content, press the subscribe button below and you'll get notified when the next video comes out. So now let's double click on this gradient and start to experiment with this. If we want to move this diamond gradient to get it where we want it to, we can do that. We can put it right on top 
of the sun, which is where I'm going to be drawing the viewer into because of what's going on here. And that's gorgeous. Now we could do it here too, because that's a great spot too. looking at this gradient. This gradient is going from blue to orange. Okay. So what's happening is we're placing blue over the sun and orange is going to fan out to everything else. The angle here is the angle of which that square or diamond is going to place itself onto the image. So if you have it at basically a zero degree, it's going to be huge for some reason. And 90 degrees is going to be smaller and um, fan out from a horizontal and vertical position. I typically keep mine at this angle here at 90 degrees and everything seems to work out just fine. The scale is how big that's going to fan out. So if we go with like 500%, it's going to start blue in the middle and fan out to the orange on the outside, which with this, it's just going to add a lot of contrast because we have a high contrast blue that we're using. So let's just make that 200%. Now here, dither, dither is where if you're starting to see some banding coming through because of the gradient that you're using, you'll hit dither, which will add noise to that banding. And it will try to fill that in and make it appear a little bit better as you use that gradient. If you're working with high resolution images, you really shouldn't see too much of this unless you've done a lot of work and a lot of pixel destruction. The reverse, now this one's important, especially for this gradient, because as I use this gradient, you see the blue is in the center and I don't want the blue in the center. I want the orange in the center because that's what color the sun is. So if I press reverse, it's going to invert that gradient. And wow, look at that. I told you I was going to get excited. Oh, that is awesome. So what it's doing is it's it made the sun that we have our uh, angle and our scale set to orange and it's fanning out into that high contrast blue, which magically makes this photograph look better. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. Now, if we want to change the color of the gradient, we're going to click inside the gradient. And here we have anywhere that you've created gradients or anywhere you've collected gradients. You can select any gradient you want to see what's going to happen here. Or you can say, OK, let's get a little bit more um, fine tuned for this image that we're working on. So this orange is a higher contrast orange. If I double click on it, it's basically a purest form of orange. If I bring it into something like this, because of the way soft light works, it's going to add that orange color, but make it lighter as well. That's why it's important to understand your blend modes. We'll press OK. Now, if we double click on this one, we can change the color from the bluish color to maybe something that's more conducive to this image, like maybe a magenta or even go into the reds. And look at that. Wow. Transform an image with one single gradient. We'll press OK. Now, the reason why this one's working the way it is, remember, we had to reverse this one. But the gradients that I have set up for you, you won't have to reverse them. That actually shouldn't be necessary for you. So we'll press OK. We'll press OK. And look at this. Wow. Transform that. Transform the color. Transformed everything. Now, if we double click on this and we change the scale to something like 250%, you can see how we get more of that orange in the background. It fans out. Now, you're not just stuck with this. Remember, you have all things here. You have blend if. You have opacity. You have... Um, your masking, you can do whatever you want with this. So let's say I want the black areas in the photo underneath to kind of shine through this a little bit because everything's getting a little too contrasty in that red. If I double click on this, it brings me into my blend if options In my blend if options, I want the underlying layers, darkest dark areas to be protected. So as I move this over, it starts to allow those dark areas to kind of shine through that. So we don't lose that in that mess of color grading there. And we can do the same thing on the highlight side by letting some of those highlight colors come through too. If you press alt or option, you can cut this little thing in half and split it and life is good. Look at that. Wow. 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 Now that's pretty cool. So that's on an obvious sunset image. Okay. And it actually was a pretty darn good looking sunset image to begin with, but let's take a look at something like this where we already have kind of a blown out sun back there. And that really doesn't quite match the contrast of the rest of the image with this blowout like this. You would think that we would want to be sucked into there a little bit more. So how can I control that? Well, I told you I made you some actions, right? Well, if we open up this actions folder here, it's the F64 Academy diamond <laughs> gradient magic. We press play on step one. What that's going to tell us is, hey, set the location of the diamond, set the scale and set the color of the gradient. You can use my gradients. You can use anybody's gradients. So we're going to move this. So it's right over that sun. And look at that looks pretty good, right? Now, I also made a series of blend modes for you here too. So you can maybe try linear light, which is going to set you up with a different fill because this is based on fill and not on anything else, which actually looks really great for this one because it's taking that light that's there and it's making more light exist. We have the hard mix blend mode, which is going to give us some more color contrast. And then if we press play on this one, it's going to get us back to that same soft light effect that we had before. The linear light blend mode works great for this. And just know that linear light is controlled by fill. So if you need more of that contrast, just change that to something like 25% instead of 15% and look at what you get there. 
Now I've also set you up with some gradients. And what I want you to do here to get your gradients set up in a way that you can use them in a, in a really conducive way is if you go to window and then you click right here on gradients. It, this might be like this for you. I'm gonna grab this and just put it up here in between my histogram and my swatches because now this is great. You know, double clicking in here and then clicking in here to go and change a gradient is a pain. So with the new Photoshop CC 2020, we can actually control this gradient right from the gradients that I've built for you. So after you install my sunset gradients, you can just click through here and magically change your photograph. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, as I just click around, I'm like, wow. You know, here we're taking colors that are already existent in the image and just making it that much better. And it's incredible. The reason why I built these actions for you and built these gradients for you is it's a lot of steps in order to get that gradient set up, isn't it? You gotta set the gradient, you gotta set the diamond, you gotta come back out of it, set the blend mode, go back into it, get it dialed into where you want it, then change the color of the gradient. That's like seven steps of excessive craziness that you don't necessarily need to go through. So if we click on this one, this is a great photograph to start, but my eye is drawn to the areas of highest highlight, which is out here and not towards this area. We don't have a sun here, do we? But what did I say? This is a ghost trap. You can throw this thing out. You can suck the viewer in. Let's do it. So I'm going to go into my actions. I'm going to press play on that gradient. It just so happens it's going to open up right in the center like that. We'll press continue. And then I'll just get this dialed in right where I needed to be dialed in and press OK. Now that I have my gradients set up over here, all I got to do is click on the gradients and I can change and alter the mood of this image just by clicking through these. I like this one right here. This is great. Watch. Watch this. Oh, the eyes all over the place. Ha, gotcha, now you're right in here. You suck the viewer in, let them see your focal point, and then have them kind of transition out around the rest of the image. This is where color grading comes in. Now, I like this because of the colors that it chooses here. It's a cooler uh, temperature of the entire image, which gives me more of a longing type of memory type of feeling. But you can use something like this, uh, or something like this, with that inverted look to have that warmer feeling. This feels like a warm summer day. This feels more of like a cool winter sunset, right? So we change the mood, physically change it so that the viewer actually physically feels colder or hotter, or we just change the mood of the feeling based on what the brain is seeing when it sees those colors. Take a look at this image. This is a more of a typical sunset image that what most of us would have. These ones over here are already rather processed photographs. This one is a not so processed photograph. So let's use that action. Press play on that diamond gradient. Bam, look at that. Move it right where we want it to be. Holy cow. If we want to get it dialed in even easier, go to 15% to get that dialed right over top of that sun, then change that scale back to something like 200. With this one, you could probably even go to 250%. And look at that. We've got this beautiful, just awesome glowing sun now that's beaming right towards us. And the whole dialogue of the colors on the outside changes. And we can change that based on what we want that to feel like. Do we want to exaggerate those colors that are there? Or do we want to put more of the, the feeling and emotion of the colors that we want into that photograph? With this image, the colors that are there are blues and, and oranges, which are great. But with this one, I'm actually getting a little bit of that magenta in there, which I tend to be really gravitate towards magenta. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but I really like it. I don't even like the color pink at all. <laughs> but for some reason, magenta in my sunsets is something I can really gravitate towards. But look at that. Totally transforms the image in one single click. Now, does this have to be just on sunset style images? Not necessarily. We can use that gradient again, that diamond gradient, press play on that. Wow. All right, this is going to look awesome. We'll press OK. Um, double click this so we can get this dialed in right about here. Press OK. Actually, let's get that scale to something like 250. And now we can change that color. Look at that. Look at the mood that we got there. And you see here, like, there's no real highlight for the viewer to kind of get into. It's like, oh, yeah, those are that's beautiful lavender plants. Yeah, it's nice. But this is like, whoa. Oh my gosh, we use that lavender color to our advantage to really push the mood and feeling of this photograph so that we get sucked into the middle. And we just want to look and we want to look all over the place and look at how dramatic and intense these colors on the outside have gotten. Wow, wow. And let's go to this one. Very similar type of image. This one can be easily transformed as well. Not necessarily a sun back there, but our focal point is back there. We can hit that diamond gradient on here, get it dialed in where we want it to be and then maybe change it to, oh my gosh. We can change it to, oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that, oh my word. And you know, it, 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 there is a lot going on with this now in the outsides here, and it really does vignette in and exaggerates that vignette. So let's just drop the opacity to something like 
So it's not so dark on the outside there, but look, it just says, oh, we, we can look all over this photograph all over. I'm looking all over. Oh, now I'm right in the middle. Holy cow. Man, gradients will transform the way you edit your photographs. So if you're just tuning into this or you tried to skip around a little bit, if you want, in the card above, you can download the actions that I've created for you along with the 16 sunset style gradients that I have here so that you can just right now press play on this action and start clicking away and transforming images that I already know you have in your portfolio that you wanna make better after watching this video. It's gonna happen in a second with one layer. This is one layer. Come on, folks, one layer. Oh, man. Oh man, I wish I could say, and then there's more, but I already showed you a lot. All right. So I use these gradients all the time in my workflow. I use them all the time in my critique sessions to show people how they can really draw the viewer into their image with color grading and color theory. I, I really think that the same is possible for you once you get used to using them. Obviously there's many other types of gradients. I'm only showing you the diamond gradient right now because of the way it fans out so well with landscape photography, but I implore you to try the radial gradient. I implore you to try the reflected gradient. Actually, I've done an entire course on this stuff called Photoshop Foundations Gradients, and it's a phenomenal course that goes over the gradient uh, in much more depth than I have here in this last 15 minute video. So I certainly hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to this video. If you want this stuff, go into the description, download the actions, or go up in the card above to download these actions. I want you to have this kind of power and control over your landscape photography because it is absolutely fantastic what you can do with it when you exploit it. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.